Now, over 1,000 persons have been infected with the coronavirus disease in Lagos. This is after the Nigeria Center for Disease Control announced that the state has recorded 30 new cases on Friday. Reports also indicate that over 71% of the COVID-19 cases in Nigeria were recorded in Lagos, Abuja and Kano. Lagos has the highest cases of COVID-19 with 1,006 infections, followed by Kano, which has 311 cases, and Abuja with 214 cases. Joining us live via Skype is a medical practitioner, Dr. Chima Onoka. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Now, in a matter of days, Nigeria will begin its gradual phasing of the lockdown. Essentially, work would resume and become normal. Do you think that we are in a place where we should be making such decision? Um, basically, there are many things to consider in making the decision. Of course, we know the rising number of cases, and um, that's that's really um, a big challenge. Um, but there are many things that the government has also considered to see that there is some relaxation. And so, I mean, those are decisions that have to be made, and they've actually been made. Mm. All right, Doctor, are you also worried that we could spiral into a second wave of the outbreak at this point? Please go ahead. Okay. Where we are, the numbers will rise. And these are numbers that, you know, because people have been infected over the last few days or weeks and testing has increased. So we will see that the numbers will increase. For instance, between 30th and 1st, we already have like, you know, nearly like three, nearly 3,000 tests compared to 2,000 tests between the 25th of um, April and the 30th of April. So testing capacity has, you know, expanded massively. And with the interaction, more people will have, you know, um, will also get infected. So it will increase. And, you know, that's what we are meeting. That's what we have. Mm. Well, what possible options should we then explore, in your opinion? Where we are now, it, it's the, um, there's a lot that has been said about prevention. And that means from your office to where I sit to where other people are, we will need to just do all that we can to, to apply those preventive measures. Um, because there are many things that we are, you know, that, that you have to watch from, we don't know how many people are infected. The stories from Kano tell us clearly, Kano and even what's happening with the Amajiris tell us that lots of people, far more than we are testing, far more, far more than we are testing are infected. That's just what is what it tells us. And but, but we go from testing to also, you know, look at how many people are getting confirmed. That figure has remained around, okay, between that, that 17th and 30th, it was around 12% of those tested. And uh, between 30th and then 1st of May, it's like, you know, it's gone from 15% and then to 14%. But that's also giving us an idea of the, the impact they can have in terms of our health system and then how many people are remaining in terms of um who is discharged and who is not discharged from between 25th 30th and 1st that has changed from like 19 percent of those who are confirmed um to 17 percent and then to 16 percent that tells us, that uh, gives us an idea of how many people are remaining with the health system, how many people should, should we be making provision for if we have um, um, these kinds of numbers being discharged. It means that, um, you know, like, you know, like 84% 80, of people are still in care out of this um, 15,000, out of this um, 2,170 confirmed cases. So these numbers are expanding. We need the prevention to continue wherever people are um, during while, while work resumes a bit. And then um, we need to be making more provision for where people can get care because the numbers are increasing. 
And like I always say, it's not only in public facilities. And then our investments should help to build. It's a marathon, not a dash. Our investments should focus a lot on on things that will be more sustainable because this is a marathon, not a dash. And this brings me to my next question. As life resumes to normal, if you like, what extra measures should be taken individually and collectively, especially those uh, for those who must be out during this time in terms of having to go to their places of work? Yes, one, they should remember their hand washing is still the best thing that we will talk about. It's still the most important thing. It's best not to get infected um, than to talk about when people recover. Of course, we know that, you know, about four to five, about, you know, four out of five people are going to feel that it's like the normal flu for those who may have it. So, but hand washing will reduce the chance of anybody at all having it intensely. So, you know, periodic hand washing. And then we've talked about the face masks. So so that that slows down the process. Using it well, not just using it, but using it well. And there's a lot of guidance about how to use it. You can also, people can also check. There's a lot of information out there in the social media and on NCDC website. And um, literally everywhere, even in offices, people are sensitive to that. So, I, you know, I think um, um, so people need to use that so that we slow this we we really slow it and uh, which is important um to us and for the health system and if if you feel sick um let your physician know best to call them first and get information than you know jumping in somewhere and then I, we need to empower the private hospitals where people go for care if we don't, unless we get the private hospitals prepared, unless we get them prepared, more health workers will keep having an increased number of health workers. That's the key because people are going to those health facilities thinking that they have malaria, an ordinary cold. As long as that's happening, we'll keep having more health workers exposed. There's no, there are no two ways about it, and that's why health systems approach is the best way, looking at the entire network of health services that exist in a state, across the nation, and planning based on that, and not just the short-term measures. All right, thank you so very much, Dr. Chima, for your time, and please do stay safe also. Thank you very much.